uh, could you please tell us your name, how old you are and what your job is or what you do for a uh, job? Uh, my name is Douglas. Uh, I am almost 42 and I'm, I guess the umbrella term for, for what I do is I'm a uh, science communicator. So uh, I'm currently working at uh, ScienceWorks, part of Museum Victoria, as a, well, a new title, a learning facilitator. So what does that mean? I, I deliver content to guests and to students, um, whether it's a particular program or if it's just a general kind of thing. So like if they went on an excursion, um, you might be one of the people who was presenting to them or giving them information. Yeah, definitely. So there's, uh, you know, there's public shows, there's shows for students who will uh, be booked in through schools, and then there's uh, workshops as well. And so it's, it's a very a broad range of different content that I'd be delivering. And how long have you been doing this particular job? Uh, I've been at uh, Museums Victoria for almost three years. Before that, I was doing something very similar at the aquarium. So I was a presenter and, and uh, doing that that work, but just a different venue. So what are parts of the, what are some of the roles and responsibilities that you have as part of your job? Well, it's uh, delivering content to guests uh, is pretty much the number one uh, responsibility that we have. Uh, then, of course, during, uh, you know, kind of shake ups in, in the way that we're able to deliver content, we've had to really kind of change a little bit of what we're doing. Um, so at the moment, we are also developing content for online and uh, doing a lot of filming and doing web-based uh, uh, stuff. So it's um, not just delivering, it's also researching uh, uh, topics because, you know, as a, a, a communicator, a science communicator, you can't say, well, I'm just doing biology, I'm just doing physics and stuff like that. There's so many different sciences that I have to be able to have uh, an, enough of an understanding for in order to then make it accessible to the public and, and students. So you're not just given the information, you sort of, you're involved in actually creating that information yourself before you present it to people. Yeah, um, definitely that you got to do a lot of research, not just uh, to develop the content, but just also so that you have the understandings needed in order to field questions and be mm. confident in what, what you're delivering. Okay. So was this your first job? And if not, what did you do before that? And is there a particular reason that you might have changed? Oh, this is definitely not my first job. Um, <laughs> I've had uh, quite a few jobs uh, uh, throughout my life, um, adult life. Um, and each job that I've had has kind of led me to this path, I guess you could say, of being a, a, an educator and a communicator um, and being in front of people. So um, what were you doing when I first met you? Because I think the kids would probably, or the students would find that pretty cool, pretty interesting. Well, uh, you know, I, I guess one of the questions often is, is like, what, what kind of schooling do you have and, and that got you here? I kind of am a bit of a, a Jekyll Hyde, I guess you could say. I have two different personalities. One is the science personality, and the other is that uh, I uh, uh, am also or was once a circus performer. So um, I've been able to uh, follow two different passions of mine throughout my careers. One is being a performer, and one is loving learning about science and talking about it. Um, and it just so happens that uh, being able to perform and also understand and communicate science actually go really well um, mm. together. Uh, yep. So I can engage audiences and uh, continue to, to talk about things that I love. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so what sort of subjects did you do at high school and was there a reason that you chose them? Did they link into either what you're doing now or what you've done in the past? Well, uh, obviously I'm, I'm sure you can tell by my accent that I'm not from Australia. Uh, <laughs> so the schooling system was a little bit different in that uh, the selections of classes that you would take in high school were pretty prescribed. You could take different levels. So you would have to have a, 
uh, English and it would be what type of literature class it was and and science was pretty much the same stream whether it was you know just different levels so I, I guess when it came to what I chose it was definitely uh, the higher ends of science so it wasn't just you know uh, I'm just gonna pick you know whatever will get me through my high school career at the, at the bare minimum now it was definitely uh, biology and, and physics and, and chemistry all of that stuff and uh, I think I think for the extracurriculars and stuff like that doing some theater and sport and all that it definitely uh, uh, not necessarily what um, Australian high school students would be be used to mm. um, the ability to really choose and pick your direction actually came in university where okay. you could take a, a much broader uh, range of classes and, and just kind of give it a go type of thing. Yeah. And so did you do a university or college or further study after leaving school? Yeah, so I have two degrees. One degree is a Bachelor of Arts in Biology um, and another is a Bachelor in Circus Arts. So did a three year degree program learning how to be a, a circus person. And um, in the United States system too, a Bachelor of Arts degrees are really um, kind of the normal. Uh, where you go to university and you get your broad range of what they call the, the liberal arts. So within my uh, science degree, I had to take English and uh, uh, literature classes and stuff like that. So it wasn't just, you know, here are your science classes, mm. you got to do this. So I took everything from, uh, you know, uh, Buddhism and Taoism class to uh, anthropology classes to uh, um, archaeology classes so really got to to get this broad range and and explore different um well different sciences i always mm. kind of tended to go to the sciences yeah that sounds really cool <laughs> okay. actually one of my favorite classes and and it sounds like such a an adult like oh that would be so boring and you know <laughs> was actually the history of science and it was it was really cool to see you know how how these concepts that we take for granted actually came about yeah yeah you sound really old and nerdy now <laughs> yeah but i was i was like 20 or something like that when i was taking yeah. that class and i still thought yeah. it was cool <laughs> <laughs> oh that's funny yeah well, like um, like Tito Bronte, wasn't it him that had like the brass nose or something like that? I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember who, some sort of astronomer and he got his nose cut off in a sword fight. So he had a brass nose. Well, that sounds nose. exciting. So, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, so you're not doing the circus stuff anymore, are you? Uh, not with circuses and stuff like that. I still uh, do some performance-based work as well when mm -hmm. the opportunities arise. Um, and, you know, I keep that up my sleeve, uh, mm -hmm. particularly as a, another revenue stream, because as a science communicator, you, you're not looking usually at full time work um, mm. because uh, it's, it's often booking based wherever you are. So it, it depends on how many schools and uh, are coming in. Mm. So I'll have to supplement my income with with other either like jobs elsewhere or through just another stream. So the performance is, is still a. Uh, uh, a passion of mine but also an income stream yeah okay so I guess that kind of leads us into the next question which of course everybody wants to know is uh, how much do you earn is it millions of dollars or just hundreds of dollars <laughs> uh, listen it's I'm certainly not doing this work for for trying to get rich um, Pro rata uh, science facilitator, you're looking around, uh, you know, sixty thousand dollars, depending on whether you are a, a government or private institution. Yeah. Uh, pro, pro rata meaning that if I were to be doing that job uh, full time, that would be yeah. my yearly income. Yeah. Uh, where uh, since it's it's not full time, it's uh, I'm, I've got, you know, I guess you could say part time, but I can possibly work full time hours uh then i'll go and take a look for for other opportunities so as far as income is concerned uh, i try to to you know schedule myself and look for opportunities that will keep me around that sixty thousand mm dollars -hmm. a year uh, but with that said um i'm not earning enough to you know own a, a porsche or anything like that yeah 
but I really, I really do. I might be cash, maybe not rich, but time rich compared yeah. to somebody who's, who's in a job from nine to five. Mm -hmm. I'm able to really structure my days in that I, I can really do what I want when I want it to a degree. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think that that is a luxury that very, very few people have an opportunity to, to take in this day and age where, you know, you think, oh, I got to go from nine to five and hey, it's the weekend. I can party now and let it off and, and all that. And you get into the cycle. I have no cycle. It's, yeah. I, I can be working a Sunday. I could be working a Saturday. I could have Wednesday and Friday off. Mm. It does make it difficult sometimes, but at the same time, it, it's just, it's uh, really uh, liberate, liberating in the sense that I can really uh, live my own life as far as a cliche is concerned. Yeah. And I guess it means that you sometimes get to spend a bit more time with your kids than if you had to work, like you say, sort of nine to five kind of hours. Yeah, excellent. Exactly. And, and I've been, a, we were able to schedule, uh, uh, our times so that we don't have to do, uh, say, uh, childcare. And it's one of those things that if, you, if you're working a job and, and you need to do childcare, then like, what is it? The first like four or five months of the year that you're working, you're basically working to pay off childcare. And, yeah. and so I really don't prescribe to that. I have to work in order to uh, earn enough to then work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just I just find that really uh, uh, counterintuitive. Um, it is a bit of a juggling act and stuff like that, and yeah. and I am extremely privileged in the sense that I I have uh, the skill sets and the backgrounds and stuff like that enabled to me to to live this life that I'm living. Yeah, that sounds really cool. So um, I guess before we wrap it up. Um, what's hard about your job and what do you like about your job apart from what you've already sort of mentioned yeah what's hard is 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 that double side of the, the the two sides of the coin one is that i'm not at a monday to friday work schedule i can be all over the place so it, it sometimes doesn't lend itself to your traditional uh, thinking as far as yet yeah, you've got your weekends free mm. uh, so, so it does mean sometimes i do have to miss out on on those activities that normal people would yeah. would enjoy yeah um but it is it's the two sides of a coin i think um sometimes it's hard but a lot of times it's great yeah uh wh what do i enjoy i enjoy learning i know it's such <laughs> an old person's thing <laughs> to say and you I, also enjoy sharing that learning with everybody uh, else yeah, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a biologist, but for my job, I had to learn robots and coding. Yeah, uh, and uh, one of my favorite things to do at ScienceWorks is operating the planetarium, um, being being at that desk and having ten thousand buttons on this computer that I can throw up on the dome, and show people uh, different galaxies and stuff like that. Uh, I would never been able to do that when I first got out of university as a biology major, but to get to where I am and to be able to continue to learn and do that, like it just opens up so many different experiences through life. And I know it sounds like such an old person's thing to say. Uh, when did we become old? <laughs> I think it happened about 20 years ago, Doug. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, but just uh, you know, yeah, just continuing to reinvent and and discover passions that I didn't know were there mm. is is really great about my job. Yeah. yeah. So I guess um, you you've sort of touched on um, my last question, I suppose, is the kind of traits that you need to have in your profession, and I guess flexibility of you know you your your strength is biology, but you've you've learned how to adapt to some other things to, and you've discovered extra passions, I suppose, as part of that. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'm definitely biased in my thinking, but by being trained in science, uh, you you get a good idea about how to think more than anything else, um, how to approach problems, how to, to learn, 
Um, and if you're able to take that to whatever uh, avenues of, of, of professions and life and that you want to go through, then I think it sets you up to, to continue that journey. Um, and I, I yeah, I, I'm so glad that I've done what I've done in the past. Uh, and it's actually, you know, where am I going in the future? That's the unknown, but I'm okay with that. Yeah. Roll with the punches. <laughs> Well, once this um, big um, remote learning punch is over, we might have to get you into the school to do some of your uh, circus performing tricks. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, um, we'll see if the body allows me to do some of that stuff. <laughs> In a um, while but, since you've walked on glass, is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, you know, I can, you know, I can do that, you know, if, uh, if you want to do another remote learning on how to walk on glass and the <laughs> science of it. <laughs> Well, I'll um, have to talk to the principal about that. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Maybe it, we need to do some risk assessments on that. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah, but if you do, uh, if you don't do it at your own home, do it somewhere else. They probably have better insurance. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, thanks very much for um, giving up your time, Doug, to answer some questions. I hope that um, it's given our students a little bit more of an insight into. Um, what happens with those people when they go to those excursions and they get taught stuff so it's kind of cool to see what actually goes on behind all of that yeah and uh, listen if anybody has any questions is thinking about uh, you know going in this pathway just you know uh, reach out um, as you can possibly tell i'm happy to talk <laughs> awesome thanks for your time Doug. thank you very much <laughs> Bye.